Good morning, everyone. Happy Easter to you. You may not be here with us, but you're here in spirit. We're going to worship Jesus this morning and sing about all of the great things that he's done for us. Amen. Greatest day in history. Death is beaten. You have rescued me. Sing it out. Jesus is a
saints cry out, we worship you, we worship you.
His presence 
everyone. Good to have you here with us on uh, Facebook. Uh, Pastor Larry Griffith here at New Life and uh, this is the greatest uh, time to celebrate. Uh, Jesus is no longer in the tomb. Uh, he's very much alive and we know where he's at right now. The Bible says he's at the right hand of the Father interceding for us. But uh, we, we are going to celebrate. We are going to remind ourselves of what the Lord has done. We are going to receive communion today. And, and, and the Spirit of God has given me a song. I'm going to start off with a song. And it's like if, if Peter had a guitar, uh, it, it might have, he, he might have wrote this. So. All right. Our hope was lost today. For Jesus has died I thought that he was the one God's own son They took him down from the cross Placed him in a tomb And it's over It's over now, yes it's over, it's over now. All of the miracles I did see, is more than a man to me. I saw him raise the dead I walked on water with him But all of this guilt and shame I did not know his name And it's over It's over now Yes, it's over It's over now For I am to blame I carry the shame I did nothing to save you I am to blame I carry the shame I did nothing to save you And it's over It's over Yes, it's over, it's over now. Three days have come and gone, I've been here with my friend John. Mary comes bringing some news Says the stone's been rolled away Jesus is alive Peter and John, Jesus is alive So we're running, we're running, we're running, running Yes, we're running, we're running, we're running, running Yes, we're running to that too if it's true Yes, we're running, we're running, we're running, running Yes, we're running, we're running, we're running, running Oh, we're running to that tomb To see if it's true He's no longer there He's no It's an empty tomb. Yes, 
He's no longer there. It's an empty tomb. Yeah. The joy that floods my soul. Oh, my heart knows so very well to hear your voice again. Knowing you conquered sin. Death could not hold you down If I could just hear your voice again Peter, turn around I turn around to see My Jesus standing in front of me I see the nail print hands I see the love of God on his face And he says It's not over It's not over now It's not over It's not over I am alive, I have won, I have conquered death in the grave. I am alive, I have won, I have conquered death in the grave. And it's not over, it's not over now. It's not over, Peter, it's not over now. For you see, I am the great I am. I am the resurrection. I am the life. Did I not say that I would rise the third day? I am the Alpha and the Omega. I am the beginning. I am the end. I am the absolute truth. I was once dead, but now I am forever alive. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hope you enjoyed that. I'll tell you what, when the Lord, the Spirit of the Lord gave it to me, it, it ministered life to me. Because He is life. Jesus is life. He's our way. He's our truth. He's, he, he's alive. And everything on this Sunday that we celebrate his resurrection, it's like he was saying, Larry, it's not over. It's actually the beginning. You know, the, the beginning of all things that he said, I'm the alpha. He is the beginning. He is the omega. He's the end. He's, he's everything. And, and when you think about the tomb, is empty. He has risen. He's no longer where he lay. He, he's alive. And, and to understand this, this important truth for every believer, every Christian, to, to understand the importance of Jesus not being in the tomb. Uh, we're we're going to look at that today and, and to understand that if, if he did not rise from the grave, if, 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 the tomb, if the tomb was not empty, we would still be under sin. And, 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 that, and the wage of sin is death, that, that we would still be separated from God. But Jesus is the mediator. He is the one that bridges the gap. He is the one that has brought us uh, in right standing with, with God the Father through what he has done, through his death, burial, and resurrection. See, that there has to be a, a, a resurrection. If, 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 there's no if there's no resurrection, then we have no, uh, I mean, we have no hope. There's, there's no life. And, and we're going to look at that uh, this morning. Because if Jesus didn't, it's game over. If, 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 if he did not do this. And, and, and to think about that, in, in Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. If, if he didn't... If he stayed in the tomb, that, that scripture would not be true. Because everything that happened that Jesus began to do, 
uh, here on the earth, if he, if he remained in the tomb, it, it died with him. That was it. There's, there's, there's no more. You know, what, whatever Jesus, you know, with the miracles and the signs and wonders, you know, casting out devils, then it ended with him. If, if, if he did not rise from the grave. So with, with that in there, I've, I've got a scripture here that I want to read to you. It's found in 1 Corinthians. He says this in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 12 through 19, I'm going to read to you. Now, if Christ has preached that he rose from the dead, how can some of you say that there's no resurrection of the dead? If there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not risen. If Christ has not risen, then our preaching is in vain, or it's empty, it's, it's useless, it's of no good. And also our faith is no good, it's, it's also in vain if he's not uh, raised. Yes, and we would be found as false witnesses that God raised him up, whom if he did not raise up, if in fact the dead do not rise, for if the dead do not rise, then Christ has not risen. If Christ is not raised, your faith is in vain. You are still in your sins, or we are still sinners. Then also those who have fallen asleep or died in Christ have perished. He says, if in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. If all we have is this life, it's, it's what he says, it's, it's miserable. It's, it's not fulfilling. And, and, and to think that if, if Jesus was still in the tomb, all that we're doing today is for nothing. It's useless. Pray, praying for people would be useless. Uh, taking this word and witnessing to others, it would be useless. You know, everything that's found in this word of God would be useless. So, so it is so very important to the believer to understand that if he did not rise from the dead, then, then we're still in our sins. We're still under the control of, of, of sin itself. And, uh, but we know, as, as Paul goes on to say, that, that, you know, basically come to your senses. That that's not the truth. That, that he did rise from the grave. You know, I, I've got good news right, right here in the same chapter that Jesus was spotted. You, you know, to, to think that after his resurrection, it, it, it says here in, in the writings, he says here that, uh, that he was seen. This is what it says. For I deliver to you, first of all, this is found in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 3, and I'm going to read down uh, through 8. It says, For I de deliver to you, first of all, that which I also received, how Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures, was buried rose again the third day according to the scriptures and was seen by Cephas or Peter and then by the twelve. Then he was seen by over 500 brothers at once of whom the greater part remains to this present time though some have passed away. Then he was seen by James and then by all the apostles. Last of all, he was seen by me as one born at, at, a, at a due time. So, so the Apostle Paul said that he had seen Jesus also. So to understand that that's good news for us, that, that Jesus was cited. That uh, if, if you study in, in, in the Gospels, uh, once Jesus was out of the tomb, then the Roman guards went and told uh, you know, the, the, the leaders there, and they said, well, let's, let's make up a, 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 a thing that, that his disciples carried him off. And it's still known to that today there in Israel that, that, uh, that the disciples just carried G Jesus off, that he wasn't raised from the dead, that they don't believe that he's the Messiah. But we know that he is, amen, that Jesus said that the Messiah had to suffer, that, that he had to be crucified. And, and, but on the third day, he said, he had to rise, and we know that he is risen. Glory to God. You know, to, to think according to the scriptures... Christ died for our sins. According to the scripture, he was buried and he rose the third day. 
In Romans 4, 25, it says, He was delivered over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. It's so important. It, it, it's like, yes, Jesus died on a cross and he, he physically died and they put him in a tomb. But, but the last part, you know, it would be in vain that Jesus had to go through and do all that and, and then, then he still remains in the tomb. You know, if, if, if he wasn't raised, then you're not justified. Then you're not just before God. So our, our whole system as, as believers, as Christians, is based on the resurrection. Hallelujah. You know, this is the greatest day for us to, to know that he's alive, that Jesus has risen, and, and to understand that, that he is the great I am. You know, he said that I am the resurrection. Though one die, yet he shall live. And it's a matter of believing on him. Uh, he, he also said that, you know, that, that he was the, the I am, that I am the bread of life. And when you think of, of Jesus being bread sent from heaven, and, and, and we're going to receive communion here in, in, in a little bit, but to understand that his body, he, he said, eat this, for, for this is my body broken for you. And, and, and the bread represents his body, uh, and, and, and the, the cup uh, represents his blood that was poured out. And, and he said, this is a new covenant. So when you think of a new covenant, it's, it's, it's a new uh, relationship, man with God. See, he who knew no sin became sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in him, in Jesus. And... Everything is based on his resurrection. If, if Jesus didn't rise, then, then we're, we're not justified before God. Then, then, then there's no way that we can be right before God. But we know that the Spirit of God raised Jesus to life again. Brought him up out of the tomb. Hallelujah. That, that he had to go. It says that he, he had that time that his spirit went in, in, into hell. And, and, and understand that, that just the price, the penalty for sin had to be paid. It, it, it was, God, God said three days, that, that's the payment. And, and, and Jesus fulfilled that. And we see that he was raised anew, that death could not hold him. You know, the grave could not hold him. And when you think of the great I am, I, I think of, he says, I am the good shepherd. And, and he's our shepherd. And, and the voice of a stranger that we should not follow. And, and, and to follow this right here, that Jesus is the word made flesh. That, that his, his word is still going forth. It has power. There's life in his words. And when, when Jesus prayed in the garden, that, that he's praying to his father. And, and you know, he, he's, if you will, but also if you read in, God, in John chapter 17, he's also praying for, for his disciples. That they would all be one that the world might believe. And then he says not only for them he was praying for, but those that would believe on them. The, the words that they were saying about Jesus. That we all might be one. Well, it's been passed down to us. Do you out there believe that Jesus is the Christ? Do you believe that he's a Messiah? Do, do you believe that he rose from the grave? See, that's, that's what he's after. He's wanting us all to be one. You know, wherever you're at, you, you, you may be in a different state than I am. But we all can be brothers and sisters in the Lord because of what Jesus has done. That Jesus not only died for us, but he rose for us. To make sure all, all the benefits, all, all that comes in with this, with this new covenant, everything that was ratified, the, the blood it, it washes away our sins. And, and, it, and it just doesn't cover, it wipes them out, it, it clears clears it all off the slate that, as God has said, as far as the east is to the west, I remember it no more. So there's power in the blood of Jesus. There's power in this new uh, covenant that Jesus has done. And, and he's here today to, to make sure you get what he paid for. Amen? I mean, that's good news. This is the good news. This is not the sad news. This is not the, oh, you know, there's no hope. There's, there's, there, there's no life. No, it's not game over. It, it, it's not over. Okay, that's what the Spirit of God is saying. It's not over. Actually, it's just beginning. Your life in Him, each day is a new day, and it's beginning. And today, 
Let's celebrate Jesus. Let's celebrate the resurrection. Everything is, is wrapped up in this day today that, that we celebrate. But it is important that, that Jesus said that, he said with, with the Last Supper there, and he had, commu he, he had this, he instituted, you, you know, communion with, with the bread and the cup. And he says for us to do this until he returns. And I want to just take us over there. It's, it's pretty close. It's in 1 Corinthians 11. You know, so, so if you have your uh, element there with you here, you've you got your bread and you got your cup. I just want to remind us that the, the Bible says for us to judge ourselves. You know, examine ourselves. Look and, and see if, if there's things in your life that, that you know, it, it just seems like you, you know it's not right. It's, it's things that are pulling you away from God, not closer. And it's hindering your relationship with Jesus. You know, he, he says that if we confess our sin to him, he's just to cleanse us uh, from all sin, from all unrighteousness. And I, I believe that it's important for us, he says, when we receive communion, that we're to judge ourselves. You know, you, you don't have to come to me and, and, and for me to judge you, but you, you judge yourself and you look at yourself and to see see if this is, is, is working out. Uh, what if, if, if you come to him, he said he would not uh, remove anybody that comes to him. So as you come to him today, come to him in faith. Humble yourself under his mighty hand. Come and, and confess before him your sins. So I want you to take this time right now to examine yourself. Examine yourself. And see if there's anything in your life that, that, that you know that's not right. And you want to confess it to Jesus this morning. You, you want Jesus to remove this from your life. You don't want that in your life anymore. That you want the love of Jesus. You want the goodness of Jesus. You want the truth of Jesus. That you don't want to be hindered any longer. So I'm going to give you time to examine. And I'll examine myself. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, he, he says this. It's found in God's word. He says, I received the Lord, that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it. So let's give thanks. Let's give thanks to the Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for what this represents, Lord. We know that it represents your body. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you poured out your life unto death. And, Lord, you said for us, you said to break it, take and eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's, let's partake of the bread. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. He said, in the same manner, he also took the cup after he had supper, and he said, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. So let's, let's partake of the cup.
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. You know, Jesus said, unless you eat my flesh and drink, if you do not eat my flesh and drink my blood, you have no part of me. And many, after he had said that, many stopped following him. Even to the point where he questioned his, his 12. He asked, are you going to leave also? And Peter says to him, you know, where else can we go? You have the words of eternal life. And tr truly, Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. He, he, his words are, are not false, but they're truth. Jesus is the truth. And, and, and understand that we are partaking of him. Believers throughout Facebook, we are, we are taking a hold of Jesus as he's taken a hold of us. We're in a covenant relationship with him. And he says that as we do this, we, we remember what he has done for us. And, and, and another thing that I want, it's Easter Sunday, and to understand that he, he rose from the grave for you. Understand that he didn't stay in the tomb. He didn't stay in, in, in hell. He, he didn't stay. He arose from the grave with a mighty triumph over his foe over the enemy, over the devil, over sin, over death in the grave. Jesus has triumphed. And you and I also today, that you and I triumph in Christ Jesus. Our victory is in him. See, today as we celebrate Easter, remember that he arose from the grave to justify you to make you right before his heavenly Father. Hallelujah. That's the best news that you could get any day. It's the greatest message found in the Word of God. Because if Jesus had not risen, you and I would still be in our, in our sins. We'd have no hope. Our faith would be worthless. It would be in vain. But God... To God be the glory. See, death no longer has a sting. It's, tri it's swallowed up in life. It's swallowed up in Jesus. Everything is swallowed up in Him. So look to Him today. Allow Him to minister life to you today. Let the joy of the Lord flood your soul. Even as that song that I, I wrote, the joy that I felt even writing this, and to look on him. So keep looking to Jesus. Keep looking to Jesus in this new year. We love you. We can't wait until we're back together and, and, and we can uh, praise him together, physically that we can be. But until that time, please stay in him. Please call on him. Whoever calls upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So keep calling on Jesus. Amen. We love you here. Have a great day.